this is a ten thousand dollars plasma TV from 2008 and let me tell you if you really like ray tracing and you have an RTX GPU that's not fast enough for RTX <laughs> let's say anything less than a 3080 I highly recommend you to get a plasma TV because all you need is 60 FPS and 1080p which is sometimes <laughs> possible with a 3080 and I know that by experience now the thing is on a plasma TV 60 FPS looks okay in motion it's not fantastic it is not like playing a game at 240 frames per second okay definitely the input lag is not that great especially on this TV this is a Pioneer Kuro Elite Pro 151 FD MSRP $6,500 and today's money that will be over $10,000 so that's a command center right there <laughs> so I don't recommend these Pioneer Kuros for gaming because the input lag is not the best but you know do your research get a Panasonic uh, as close as possible to 2000 13 those are very very good okay so, you know, do your research see which one has it best input lag see what's available depending on where you live and get a very cheap but awesome plasma TV here in the US you can find them sometimes for free but of course nobody's gonna give away one of the best plasmas if it's a good one, you might have to pay two, three hundred, four hundred dollars. It is worth it, especially if you like ray tracing, bro. Anyways, let me tell you, it is so demanding. For example, this is the Sora uh, demo. I think this is what Jensen was showing on the 5090 release. It was not exactly this scene, but it's the same uh, tech demo. This opens with frame gen on by default and half the resolution. So upscaling, so if you have a 4K, it will be 1080p upscaling to 4K with DLSS. And it's so demanding, even with a 5090. It's hard to get 60 FPS at 4K. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> so ray tracing is too demanding. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, and it doesn't look that great in my opinion, especially this demo. I think this demo sucks. It absolutely sucks. And the reason is, first of all, there's something wrong about the, the gamma. It's so dark and the biggest problem for me is that the lighting, yes, it does look uh, realistic, uh, but it takes some time to change. So you go, you go in, it's super dark, and then after a moment, it brightens up. So it is laggy. The lighting is laggy. So when you're getting 60 FPS, a 1080p with a 5090 and your GPU is like at 70 80 percent I'm expecting perfection and this is not it it just this is it's not worth it I don't I do not want any game to be running like this definitely not with forced ray tracing so there's no no choice basically you either get trash performance <laughs> or you don't play the game it's, it's that simple it doesn't matter if you have a 59 so ray tracing is just 
doesn't make any sense. But there are some games that are not like you know fully path tracing and all of that, where you know ray tracing might improve you know, the graphics. So for example, this game is not demanding at all. I mean, I can get over 240 frames per second at 1080p with a 5090, even when this game is is it has some major drops. It's not like you know, perfectly optimized or anything like that. This is um, another craps treasure. It's an indie game, a Unity engine, not Unreal. It doesn't look blurry. It's a sharp uh, looking game. But you know, the 5090, of course, I can run the game fast. Now, would I like this game to have ray tracing and path tracing? So when I play on, on my 1080p plasma TV, I can get better lighting and shadows. Yeah, why not? The option is great. I have no issues with having the option to turn on ray tracing. Because sometimes, in some games, it might you know, make sense depending on your situation, with you know which resolution and frame rate you are targeting. But definitely, these forced ray tracing games, <laughs> where you have no choice but to suffer the bad performance and, and have to you know lower the resolution all of that. It just is bad. That is bad, and I don't want to see that on any game. I don't want to see forced ray tracing, but. There you go. If you like ray tracing, get a plasma TV, uh, get a cheap, awesome plasma TV, and you might think, bro, how big is that TV? This is 60 inches, 1080p, that's going to suck, okay? The text clarity is gonna be terrible. No. <laughs> this is self-emissive RGB. The plasma technology is self-emissive. So what that means is that each pixel can turn on and off independently. Okay, so we have perfect contrast. And we don't have perfect blacks like with OLEDs, but we have you know, very good contrast. The black levels, especially on this Pioneer Kuro, are great. This TV has great black levels. The contrast is, is, is very good very good it's not bright plasma TVs are for a dark room you cannot use this TV with, with the lights on it's gonna look terrible but in a dark room it looks very very good so text clarity is not gonna be an issue this all the text in Windows looks very clear I have another Panasonic uh, plasma TV 42 inches same 1080p Text clarity is not an issue at all. The screen size is not an issue at all. All the opposite. 60 inches is awesome for gaming. <laughs> this is amazing. I, I really, really like and enjoy the, the experience of the bigger the screen size. Colors on any plasma TV. I mean, any plasma TV that I've seen, I have owned so far three, but I've I've gone to I have gone to see some other plasma TVs, you know, to potentially buy them. I've never seen a plasma TV and I'm like, oh, the colors, they suck. <laughs> colors are always good, sometimes better, depending on the on the model. But the color saturation is beautiful if you get a good plasma TV. Viewing angles, god tier. The viewing angles of a plasma TV are just as good as it gets. It's just like no difference whatsoever looking at a TV like this. It's like no difference, no shifts, shifts in the colors. It doesn't get washed out. It's just the viewing angles are just fantastic. And for gaming, if the input lag is good, then the motion is nice. Motion clarity. It's better than 120 FPS. When you move the camera, it's going to look more clear than 120 frames per second. That's right. And all you need is, some, is 60 FPS. That sounds amazing, and it is. Okay, it is. Again, it's not a CRT. A CRT is four times better than a plasma TV when it comes to motion. But I think this is the sweet spot 
where the motion doesn't suck. So yes, 60 FPS on a plasma TV, you move the camera and you are not going to be like, oh man, the motion is just terrible. Like you will. <laughs> Even with an OLED at 60 FPS, it absolutely sucks. When you move the camera, you don't want to see that. Okay, because everything is just gonna look blurry. On a plasma TV, that doesn't happen. I'm moving the camera right now, and it's not amazing, but it's good. And if there was a text anywhere, like I focus here, and I can see things, and they look a little bit blurry, but it's okay. It just doesn't bother me. So motion is nice at 60 FPS. 1080p, even with a bigger screen size, looks good. I am running the game at 1080p right now. No DLDSR, no 4K custom resolution, nothing. This is just 1080p. This game doesn't have any, it doesn't even have many settings. So there you go. Resolution 1920 by 1080. Yeah, it's, it's a borderless, uh, but that's what I'm running. And it's okay. Of course, I'm used to better. 5090, 4K, QD OLED. It looks sharper and better. But on the upside, if you have a blurry game that's very hard to run, that's where the plasma, and that's the case with ray tracing, the games become blurry because you cannot run them, so you have to lower the internal resolution and sacrifice the clarity. Well, the thing is, because it's 1080p, and also the way the plasma technology works, I think it has a little bit of a natural anti-aliasing. So my point is, those very hard to run games that look kind of blurry on the plasma, they do not bother me as much. So, you know, Black Myth Wukong or Monster Hunter Wild, yeah, I can't tolerate <laughs> it's still gonna look bad, but I can tolerate them and it, it just it doesn't bother me as much because when I have 4k you know 65 inch QD all that I'm sitting close to the screen any blurriness anything that's not 120 FPS it just I cannot live with that but with the plasma it's okay so there you go I highly recommend you to get a plasma TV regardless why because they're so cheap man you can get I paid three hundred dollars for this one by the way but I got this with an AV receiver two speakers that sound very good the AV receiver was very old it's amazing it works it still works from 1999 it still works sounds incredible and on top of that this TV <laughs> comes with two speakers. This is one of them, okay? This TV has two sound bars. That's the sound quality of this TV. Two sound bars, basically. That's, that's the speakers of this TV. It's just absolutely unbelievable audio quality. And of course, you're not going to find that on every plasma, but plasmas usually have you know, good audio. Even my Panasonic Viera which was a $1,000 plasma TV, sounds better than the QD OLED TVs that I have. So, yeah, I paid $300, I think it was worth it. This, this plasma is amazing. I don't recommend it for gaming because of the input lag, but if you have the horsepower, you can run uh, NVIDIA Fast Sync. And what that does is it allows you to run the game at a maximum frame rate. For example, I'm getting 239 FPS right now. And what Fast Sync does is that it sends the display the most recent rendered frame. So you get a lower input lag without a screen tearing. It is a, it's a waste of power <laughs> to be able to run the game at over 200 frames per second and only see 60. But the plasma has four milliseconds of persistence, 
So it's actually not that far away from the experience you would get actually getting 240 frames per second on a 240 hertz monitor, although the input lag is not gonna be even close. And the motion clarity at 240 FPS sample and hold will be better than a plasma TV. So it's a waste of power, is my point. But that's always on the table. You can use fast sync, and unless you have a weird issue, and I have experienced that with, with some games, uh, or maybe the, the settings or the configuration, where I get screen tearing using fast sync on the plasma. But if it works, you don't get screen tearing, you get better input lag because the render latency is significantly lower because the game is running way over 60 frames per second. So that's a way to, to get better input lag at 60 FPS uh, with the Plasma TV. So I don't recommend you specifically this one because of the input lag, but try to get a Panasonic Plasma as close as possible to 2013. Somebody said that they had a Samsung F8500, which is the brightest plasma and he said that it sucked for gaming I don't know why uh, he didn't explain so do your research to see if it has good input lag any because that's another very good plasma it's very bright amazing plasma TV uh, but I've been hunting for it actually I'm always hunting for great uh, plasma TVs uh, to see if I can get my hands on the Panasonic CT60, ST60, VT60, one of those, those are supposed to be the best. But yeah, man, hunt for a good, cheap, amazing plasma TV and have that for ray tracing or just to watch the TV, uh, regardless of your PC, but especially if you have a 3080, something like this, you wanna use ray tracing and, or try it at least, you cannot even <laughs> run the, Ray tracing with a 3080, man, it's, I, I never use it. I mean, I have a 59 and I don't use ray tracing. But with a 3080, it, the performance is not good enough. But at 1080p, it is. <laughs> you can get 60 FPS. So yeah, man, let's leave it there. Uh, let me know your thoughts and opinions. Also, before I finish the video, shout out to CompuSemble uh, for sending me the link to download this Sorak uh, demo. I will link this in the description of the video if you want to try it for yourself. Uh, I will also link his YouTube channel too. This is the version that has, you know, max out path tracing and the, the neural rendering of <laughs> trash. <laughs> okay, it's, uh, it sucks. The, the lighting is too slow, it runs too slow. You, you open it, this and it comes with frame generation already, half a resolution, you have to turn frame generation off by removing the frame generation files from the folder. And you have to use a command here to change the the resolution because the default is 50 so it it sucks but if you want to try it <laughs> you get a plasma tv um i have a link in the description of the video so let me know your thoughts and opinions and if you have any questions